Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today I have a quick little Sunday video for you though. I always say quick and they never end up being that quick. But anyway, I have a video for you. And yeah, it's a follow up to the unboxing video that we did earlier in the week. If you missed it, on Monday we got to unbox the new second gen Ryzen Threadripper CPUs along with MSI's X399 Creation motherboard. This one here, the heat sinks are off, but I'll talk about that more later. And we got the absolutely massive Wraith Ripper cooler. In the unboxing video, I suggested that if I had time, I could create a build video with the Threadripper 2990WX, the MSI X39 creation, and of course the Wraith Ripper. Uh, by making that suggestion, uh, it seems I'd pretty much committed myself to the build video, uh, giving the overwhelming response that I got from that suggestion. A lot of you guys wanted me to make it happen, so yeah, here I am making it happen. So you might have noticed that the complete system's actually right here behind me on the ground. I filmed this kind of the wrong way around, different order to how we normally do the process, but I was up late last night putting the build together. That's about the only time I had, and I didn't really want to film the intro and talk about it uh, late last night. So I've built it, but I filmed the process so we can check that out, and then after that I will talk a bit more about the final product. Hey, before we get to that though, please note, as you can see here, well, some of you might not actually recognize what this is, if you, especially if you didn't watch any Computex coverage, but I have built inside the Thermaltake Level 20 GT case, which was announced during the Computex trade show, and you got to see builds and things on that, depending on who you watched. Uh, but it will be officially released to the public, I believe, this week. So, yeah, something to look out for, so we can have a bit of a look at it and see how the Threadripper processor goes in it. So anyway, since I've had this case sitting around the studio, taking up quite a bit of space, I thought, what better time to put together a build we can take advantage of the 2990WX and the Wraith Ripper and stick it all in there and it should look pretty good. I think it looks pretty good, but we'll get to that in a moment. So yeah, time to queue up a smooth tune and show you guys the build process.
Okay, so there you have it, my first 32 core, 64 thread uh, workstation build. I know it's a bit awkward here, I couldn't really fit me and the computer in that well, so hopefully this shot doesn't look too bad, and hopefully the microphone isn't picking up too much uh, noise from the fans. They're not super loud, but this close to the microphone, uh, they might be louder than you would expect them to be otherwise. Anyway, uh, another issue, I realized that the uh, RGB lighting is a bit hippy dippy, bit rainbow festival. Uh, I was going to synchronize them all and go with one or two colors, but I just ran out of time to do that. So with limited time, we have the Threadripper rainbow build. Speaking of time, uh, massive, and I do mean massive, uh, review of the 2990WX and 2950X uh, will be online this time tomorrow. So yeah, make sure you check that out. It is our longest ever day one video. Uh, I've spent every waking hour and there haven't been many hours where I was asleep. So yeah, it's been a busy week. Uh, I easily put in over 100 hours. As crazy as that sounds, I definitely put in over 100 hours on this content piece. So. It's very long, it's very in-depth, I hope you guys enjoy it. Anyway, getting back to this build video, I did attempt to configure the RGB lighting, although I was tight on time, I quickly uh, did an install of Windows and set it all up. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Thermaltake's Ring Plus software working on the MSI X39 board, so not sure if that was just an issue that I ran into, uh, something that could have been overcome with a bit more time, or if there's a, a fundamental problem there that needs a new version. Not quite sure on that one. I don't know if I have, I don't think I have the software to control the Wraith Ripper, so that's something I have to get from probably Cooler Master, not sure on that one. Uh, and the other problem I ran into with RGB lighting was the ASUS or a Sync lighting only worked for the top Vega 64 graphics card and not the bottom one, so I could only yeah, sync up the lighting on the top one, so that I just bailed on that idea because it wasn't really worth it if only one card was synced up. Uh, and then what else did I run into with the RGB lighting? There was one other thing. Oh, actually, it wasn't an issue I ran into. It was a suggestion. Uh, I think uh, Thermal Take, it would be wise to include a hardware controller, uh, like an inline optional controller that you can put in instead of connecting the USB uh, cable to the motherboard because if it doesn't work and you can't use the software you're stuck with rainbow fans and all that it's kind of annoying and if you just want red or blue or whatever solid color with maybe some basic effects an inline controller would be awesome as far as i know they don't include that i could be wrong i know deep cool include that i didn't see anything like that in the package that said there were a few things missing from my package but anyway if they don't include it an inline like hardware controller for the rgb lighting would be much appreciated as for the build itself it was Pretty straightforward. Uh, as you can see, the Level 20 GT is a a large, heavy case. I think there's really no other way to put it. It's a nice looking case, but it's uh, very large and heavy with the glass panels pretty much on every side. So you've got the left and the right, the front and the top has a glass panel. So yeah, it makes the case very heavy considering its dimensions. But other than that, yeah, nice looking case. I've got a few notes on the build, so I'll share those now and yeah, go over the, some, some feedback, some constructive criticism, let's say. Uh, on that note though, of course, this was just a build video. I'm just adding a few extra bits of information. It's in no way a review. So yeah, don't expect a full in-depth review or anything like that. I can do that later on, but yeah, this isn't that. One of the issues I ran into with the build, it's not a big issue, but it was one of the smaller issues I ran into was the cable management. Uh, there is a reasonable amount of, quite a large amount of room really. I mean, probably not as much as you'd expect for such a massive case, but there is still this ample room in the back for cable management. The problem I sort of have with it, the, there's not enough anchor points and things like that to cable tie cables to and sort of separate things. So yeah, I was a bit disappointed with the lack of management, let's say, in the, the cable management section, if that makes sense. Not a big issue, that one, but one uh, that was, well, certainly a bigger issue is that there's really no uh, cable routing in the motherboard tray. There are three grommets, I believe there was three anyway. I covered them up quite quickly with the, the X39 Creation motherboard. And that's the thing with an extended ATX motherboard, despite the fact that this is a truly massive case, uh, you cover all the cable management with that motherboard. So there's simply no way to connect things like the 24 pin power cable. Uh, luckily in my situation, I had some individually sleeved cables which compact down quite flat. So I was able to put them under the motherboard and then route them around. Certainly not uh, a traditional way of installing the 24 pin power cable or 
even really a recommended one, but I got away with it in this instance. But yeah, the complete lack of cable routing when using a large motherboard is very disappointing, especially in such a massive case. Another issue I ran into, though, this one should just be a problem for my early sample. I don't imagine that the production uh, cases will have this problem, but anyway, it is the key. So you need a key, well, you should have a key to unlock the doors and my sample, there's this, that's the left and the right door, mind you. Uh, my sample didn't come with the keys, so I had no way of opening the case up. So yeah, I got the case out, all ready to build, and I spent about 20 minutes of time that I did not have looking for a key that I did not have. So that was a bit frustrating. So I either had the option of bailing on this case and not using it at all. I didn't have another case to use, so that was the reason why I persevered with this one. In the end, I shoved a screwdriver in there, turned it, it made a couple of crunching noises, nothing to do with the glass, thankfully, and it opened up. And now I can turn it, I can open and close it quite easily with a screwdriver, and it does stay in place. So yeah, not great for security if you were intending on using the locking mechanism for security purposes. Uh, basically, it's just to stop really these panels pop open if I can get my hand under there. So they've got quite strong magnets, so that's nice. So that should, that grabs it like that. So they work very well. The magnets are very strong. As you saw, they're quite hard to pull open, so they don't swing open easily. So that's good. But if you do tilt the case or move it or you're carrying it, you don't want such a heavy case with the doors flying open while you're trying to carry it. So you can lock them. But yeah, as far as security purposes go, anyone with a small screwdriver can just break them with ex very little uh, strength is required. So not great for security, but good for holding the doors in place. And that being the case, I'd rather you didn't have a key because even if I had the keys and I owned this case, I don't want to be rooting around for 20 minutes every time I've locked the door and need to find the keys because you know you're never going to find those things whenever you need them. So if that was just a little screwdriver thing, that would be kind of cool. So maybe ditch the keys and make it a little screwdriver thing. Finally, the last spot of bother are the feet. Uh, those bloody things, they just make a complete mess of your desk. Uh, the black marks are, they're easy enough to wipe away, but every time you put the case down and move it, it leaves some black, well, four black circles on your desk. It was pretty funny after I'd finished the actual build, it looked like I'd hosted an RC car burnout competition on my desk. Uh, disappointingly, I hadn't, but yeah, there was a lot of uh, black round circles and skid marks and things everywhere. So those are all the annoying and somewhat disappointing aspects of the Level 20 GT and my particular build. Everything else though went really smoothly. Uh, the Wraith Ripper, uh, that's really nice cooler, extremely easy to install and remove. So that's nice. So anyone that gets that, you won't have any problems. There's just the four screw holes on the top. So for such a massive cooler, it really is extremely quick and easy to install. Um, installing the TR4, C or installing CPUs in the TR4 socket rather, that's not that straightforward, but yeah, if you haven't done it before, it's probably a bit nerve wracking, especially with an $1,800 US CPU. I made a joke on Twitter about that. Uh, but once you've done it a few times, it's really quite simple. As for thermals on the Wraith Ripper, I can't disclose anything, at least with the 2990WX at the moment, because all that is under NDA, but that'll all be included in tomorrow's video. The MSI X399 creation obviously looks great. You probably can't see it that well. I won't open the door now, but yeah, that looks absolutely fantastic in there with the Wraith Ripper on it. And of course that board has just an absolutely massive VRM. So you can see it on this second board I have here that I'm about to go do some uh, VRM thermal temperature testing with. So that will be fun and that'll be some content you'll see probably later on in the week. There's the big heat sink that cools down the VRM and then the plastic shroud that goes over that in the I.O. But anyway, no need to get into that right now. Uh, speaking of the VRM on the Creation motherboard, quite a few of you have asked me if it's a real 16-phase V-Core VRM, and yes, it is. Well, it's an 8-phase VRM, but there are doublers creating 16 phases. I created this block diagram that better illustrates the design of the VRM, but yeah, I'll go into more detail about that in a future content piece. MSI say it should have no trouble delivering 720 watts, and I'll dive into, again, the thermal performance of the VRM when it's uh, under quite a lot of load. Can't specify how much just yet, but quite a lot of load. And I'll also compare it to flagship boards from uh, ASRock, ASUS, and Gigabyte. Well, that's really all I have time for. This probably wasn't that quick. I did rattle on a bit there, as I tend to do when I do these builds. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the build sequence. Stay tuned because tomorrow you are getting hit with the mother of all CPU reviews. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. 
See you again next time. Camera's really too far away for that. So anyway. <laughs>